Windows 11, it's right around the corner and it's soon going to be replacing Windows 10, which means a lot of users are going to be essentially upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11 by the end of this year, since obviously Microsoft had announced that Windows 10 is soon going to be end of life. But you're now thinking, is there a way that I can actually get my Windows 11 to look similar to Windows 10? Or is there a few tweaks I can do that might actually just improve your overall experience? Well, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do that in today's video. But before we do go ahead, just a quick introduction. My name is Matthew from Matthew's Tech Hub. Welcome back to the video, everyone. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and jump straight into the video. So the very first thing that I would recommend is obviously, as you can see, we're back on our Windows 11 desktop. Now, this just to clarify, so this is pretty much as if you just open up a computer straight out the box, or maybe you've just installed a fresh copy of Windows 11 without providing any tweaks or adjustments to the operating system. This is just a fresh copy of Windows 11 provided by Microsoft. Now, what the first thing is, as, as you guys probably know, Windows 11 it is very, uh, it's very privacy sort of concerning. First, obviously, you know, Microsoft requires by default when you're setting up Windows 11, asking you if, you, if you're happy to send the sort of optional data to Microsoft, which, you know, you're probably thinking, well, why can't I just fully disable this? Well, there is actually a way you can do it, but I'm gonna show you with a little bit of trick on how to do that first. So what you need to do, guys, is at the very bottom, just go to your search bar, and it's gonna search for services. And it'll then bring up the services menu just like this. So we just, bring, just drag this over here, right into the middle of our screen. So the service that we're actually gonna be looking for is actually called the Connected User Experiences and Telemetry. So if we just scroll down here, it is all in alphabetical order as you can see. If we just scroll down to C, and we should see the Connected User Experiences and Tele Telemetry service. Now what we're going to do is you're gonna right click on this service here, go to properties, and as you can see, you've got startup type right in the middle. So if we just select on this and then go down to disabled right at the bottom, and you're then going to click on where it says stop right there. Because as you can see, the service is actually currently running. So once you've clicked on stop and you've set that as disabled, just go to apply, hit OK, and that's it. You can now come out of services. So that is now part of the telemetry stopped on Windows 11. So the next thing we're going to look at now is actually in the settings menu. So if we just go down to the start menu again, go into the settings option. And then on the right hand side, we need to go into the privacy and security. Let's make this a little bit big here so we can see. There we go. And then what we're then going to do is if we just go down to where it says diagnostics and feedback, you'll then see right here it says diagnostic data. And as you can see, it says sending required data. Now, obviously, you might not want to actually send any data at all to Microsoft, which I certainly wouldn't. You know, why, why should we send required data? So let's now jump into the registry editor so we can now disable this completely from sending to Microsoft. So again, right at the bottom, just go to your search menu. You're just going to type in regedit, which is R-E-G-E-D-I-T. Again, I'll put everything on screen just so it helps you guys work out what it is I'm typing. And hit enter right here. You might also be asked if you want to make change to your device. That's fine. That's just Windows user account control there. So just click on yes. And then what you're going to do is right in this menu here um, is you're going to get, simply go to the following key. So you're going to go to H key local machine. And you're then going to go to software, policies. And then we're going to go to Microsoft and then go to go to Windows, and then well then you, well if you may have a folder called Data Collection. If you don't have that, you can obviously just right click in Windows, go to New, and then and obviously put Key, and you can just put Data Collection. But I'm just going to delete this one here because I don't need this one right here for today. And what you're going to do is again go inside of Data Collection. So now inside of Data Collection, you're going to right click, go to New, go to D Word 32 bit value, and you're going to simply type in Allow Telemetry. So if we now hit Enter. So click go into this value here and as you can see value data is set to zero so obviously you want it to set to zero because zero means disabled one would mean would mean enabled so obviously you're going to allow allow telemetry we don't want it to allow telemetry so we're going to leave it as zero click ok and then we're going to come out of this and as you can see right now it still says sending required data but if we just go back out of this menu and then go back into the diagnostics and feedback you will now see that right at the top it says some of these settings are managed by your organization and as you can see, diagnostic data is now set to off. So perfect, we've now disabled the, the uh, optional uh, diagnostic data from being sent to Microsoft, because obviously you don't want to send any data to them at all, because why should we as a user? So the next thing that you can actually do in Windows 11 is maybe you quite enjoyed using the old classic applications, for example, maybe the old notepad, the old sticky notes, or maybe even the if you go back to Windows 7, you might remember it came with some games like Solitaire or even Pinball or FreeCell. You might remember those if you're depending on how when obviously you started using uh, Windows. But 
again, that, that those are really good applications. So there is actually a site where you can get these installed into Windows 11 as well. So if we just jump onto a site here, which is called win7games.com, and as you can see, they've got quite a few options right at the top here. So for example, they've got all the old classic Windows 7 games. You've got the old classic calculator, because obviously in Windows 11, we'll just jump into the calculator here. As you can see, they gave, they've gave they given pretty much most applications a bit of a almost like facelift. So this obviously just goes quite well with the new improved UI of Windows 11. You've also got the old WordPad. So if you click on WordPad here, as you can see, Windows 11 decided to remove it in build 26020. So again, Microsoft has announced they're going to get rid of it. They've got rid of it now as soon as you update your Windows. And you're thinking, well, why can't I get it back? Well, you can, thanks to this website. But again, if we just scroll up to the very top, so I'm going to first show you that you can actually, I'm going to show you how to actually get these first. So let's say you want to get these old uh, these old games. So what we're going to do is kind of click on download games right here. Give that a second just to download in the top right corner. So once that's downloaded, you're simply just going to go open up the file just by clicking on open file right here, or it might be different depending on which browser you're using, but I'm using Microsoft Edge. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extract this first. So just select on the icon or the, the file name in there, click extract, and you can then choose where you want to extract it to. So I'm just going to extract it to my downloads folder. Give that a second. And as you see, then the extractor file will now appear right in front of you. So we now just double click on this executable file right here to run it or the application. Give it a second there just to load. And again, you might pop up with this little window. This is just a user account control. That's absolutely fine. It's just because it's not, not signed, but don't worry, it's not some shady site. It is genuine software. So we then go to yes to install this. Just follow through the installer. It's gonna ask us for our language first. There we go. And now it's gonna say, welcome to Windows 7 games for Windows 11, 10, and eight. So we now just go to next and just, again, we've brings you to this section here so you can actually choose what games you want to install and as you can see they've even got internet games as well so you might maybe used to be able to play like checkers and spades i mean but that was kind of brings you back to windows xp rather than windows 7 but uh i'll just show my age a little bit there so as you scroll as you can see you can select which games you want to install so i'm just going to leave all of them there and maybe probably tick the internet games as well click on install give that a second and then we can just untick these right here click on finish and if we now go into the start menu as you can see, it, like, all the games are shown as recommended, but if you just go to more, and as you can see, if we scroll down a little bit here, you've now got all the recommended games in the more section, but if we go to where it says all apps, select on this and then go down to games. As you can see, all the old classic games are right here. So you even got the old Minesweeper, which was, uh, oh God, it brings back to the memories. So if I just go back to my search menu again, and the next one I'm gonna show you, for example, is, is the WordPad. So if I just search for WordPad, as you can see, it's obviously built into Windows by default, it's going to be doing an internet search. So is, this isn't actually the software. This is just showing me some of, it will take me to, a, like for example, as you can see here, it'll take me to Wikipedia to tell me about WordPad, but it's not actually the software because it was removed. So if we now just jump back over to Windows 7 games, scroll down, go down to where it says download WordPad right here, click on this. And again, same process. It's going to quickly just download. Go to open up the file there. And then it's going to quickly extract the installer to my downloads folder. And if we then just open up the installer right here, give that a second to load. And again, you might get the same UAC error. Click on yes. And if we just then go to next, next, and then again, create icon for desktop, that's fine. Install that. And as you can see, we've now got the run WordPad. And there you go. So we've now got the, the old classic WordPad running in the latest version, Windows 11, which was also removed by Microsoft. So it's just a couple of things there, guys. Again, you might only want to install a certain things. You might want to go install all the old classic things. But again, if you're an avid Windows 10 user, losing some of this software might just actually bug you a little bit, which personally, it would bug me because I just don't see why they should remove it when it is, you know, if you've been using it for such a long time. Yeah, so just a little quick trick. So let's now jump over to the next thing I'm gonna recommend, which you can also do if you are swapping over from Windows 10 to Windows 11. So the next trick I'm gonna show you is, you may actually remember the old classic photo viewer. Now this is actually going back to Windows 7, which was then removed in a later version of Windows 10, and obviously permanently removed in Windows 11. Now, I actually had quite a few clients of mine saying, how do I get the old photo viewer back? Because they just didn't simply like the new photo viewer. And it was the same as me. It really bugged me. It's just a little thing which I kind of wish didn't get removed. 
So if we jump over, again, all the links will be down in the description box down below. Um, if we jump over to our website, which is called 10 Forums. Now, as you can see, this is actually something that's been out since the 14th of April, 2022. So obviously now we're in 2025, so it's quite a little while back. Now, if we just scroll down, it does give you the sort of, well, they actually kind of give you a couple of options on what you can use. So as you can see, the first one here, it says to only restore Windows Photo Viewer for current account, which means it will only work for this specific account that I'm signed into in Windows. But maybe you want to do it for all accounts rather than just one account. If we just scroll down a little bit again, which is probably the one which most users would probably do. As you can see here, it's got the uh, a download button. that says restore Windows Photo Viewer for all users, and it's a .reg file because it's going to make and will run a couple of changes to edit in the registry. Because Windows Photo Viewer isn't actually removed from Windows, it's just it's just actually a, a .dll file, but it's just been disabled. So all this does is that it re-enables it within Windows. So let's show let's see how this works. So if we just click on download, just right on here. Again, this is one for all users to restore it. It may ask, it may mention it's going to harm your device. Don't worry, it is safe, and I'll show you how you can check that in just a second. It's just because it is a .reg file that is going to edit your registry. So if we just click on Keep, and then again, if we now just come out of this, I'm just going to jump into our Downloads folder. So we just go back to our Downloads right here. And as you can see at the top, this is our registry file. So if we actually just go to right-click, and if we just go to Edit in Notepad, as you can see, you can see everything that obviously is going to be running. So, uh, you know, it's, you can see it's all uh, set by file type. So, it's, again, it's just going to obviously bring back the um, the old photo viewer depending on what type of file it is that you're going to be opening or the type of image. So, again, you can obviously have a look through there. But, again, I've checked it all. It is all absolutely fine. So, what we're going to do now is it's going to simply just double click on this and then just run it like this. And, again, it'll ask you if you want to make change to your registry editor. That's fine. So, we just select yes. And it's also going to show you that uh, it's going to ask you about sort of it's going to remove and also add some registry edits, which is absolutely fine as well. So I'm going to click, are you sure you want to continue? Just click on yes. And that's now obviously been added. So what you can now do is if I actually jump over to my pictures folder, and I'll just show you with this image here, if I double click on this, as you can see, it's going to ask us what type of file or what program do you want to open this type of file with? So we've obviously got the, as you can see here, it says Windows Photo Viewer. So if I just open up the photo in Photos just to show you the, the new version, so I'll just click on, click on just once there. So as you can see, this is basically the new sort of photo viewer, which I just don't like it, and a lot of users don't really like it either. It's just Microsoft trying to bring a lot of the UI of the application sort of more up to scratch. But you might be old and classic like myself, so you want to go back to the old photo viewer. So if we come out of this and then just right-click on the image, and if we then go to Open With, as you can see, it's got Windows Photo Viewer. So we now just click on that, and there you go. And as you can see, we've now got the old Windows Photo Viewer, which is, again, something which is something which you might personally prefer as a user. Now, something just going back on the Windows Photo Viewer, maybe you've obviously now set the photos to be the default application, but you only want it to use the Photo Viewer depending on what file type. So you can actually set that in Windows based on the file type that you want to set it for. So if we just jump into the settings here, so go to Start and then jump into Settings. If we just jump into the Apps, and then if we just then go to where it says Default Apps, so obviously it says Defaults for File and Link Types are the defaults. Select on this. And at the top, you can actually kind of, well, before you couldn't actually enter or search for it, but Microsoft actually added this, which is quite handy. So if we actually just search for, let's say, .jpg, and then we click on this, as you can see, it's currently set to Photos. So now, if we, now that we've done that little registry trick, uh, when you click on this, it will then obviously ask you which app do you actually want to use every time you open up a JPEG file. It actually is set to use Photos, but as you can see, since we've done that little registry trick, we can actually select on Windows Photo Viewer. So if we select on Windows Photo Viewer, click on Set as Default, and as you can see now, that is now set as the default program to open when you open up a JPEG file. So maybe you do work with other file types like .png um, or anything else. Obviously, you can also change those in here as well. So if, let's say we want to change it for .png files, just search .png. At the top, as you can see, PNG files are also set to open up with the, uh, with the new Photos app. So again, click on that, click on the Windows Photo Viewer, set as default. And there you go. Now PNG files will also be set as that. So you can also go test it out. So we now just jump back into our photos here. So this image here is a .jpg. Uh, sorry, a .jpeg. We now just double click on this, and as you can see, it's now going to open up in Photo Viewer. So hopefully that trick helps you guys. So let's now jump on over to the next section of the video. So the next trick is actually going to be for the taskbar or the uh, or the tray right at the very bottom of your screen, such as down here. 
Now, some users obviously might not like how Windows 11, obviously, as you can see, it sets your start button to be in the center of your screen. Personally, I've grown to love it. I don't really mind it, but obviously some users just prefer it to be the old-fashioned way. Now, there is a setting in Windows where you can actually move the whole taskbar back over to the left, but if you don't really want to do that and you, you just personally really want the old Windows 10 uh, start menu, I just want the old Windows 10 taskbar to come back, then what you can do is, again, links are all, again, are all down in the description box down below. There's actually a, a, a program which is called Explorer Patcher, and this is over on GitHub. So if we just jump over to this link right here, and we just scroll down, and as you can see, it says, follow the antivirus configuration instructions, and you just click on where it says here, highlighted in blue, click on here, and this will then take you to this page here. Now, there is a bit of a warning at the top. It is saying that Microsoft is starting to class this or show this as malware in Windows Defender. It isn't malware, don't worry, but there is also other antiviruses as well flagging it as malware. It's just because obviously it is changing the main explorer in Windows 11. So if I, what I'll do is if I just scroll down a little bit here and you've got this EP setup file right here, just click on this. And once that, again, that's just gonna quickly do a quick download there and then we'll just give that a quick second just to finish off there. Once that's done, just click and open and just run that file. And it's gonna ask if you wanna make change to your device, that's user account control, so that's fine. So select yes. And as you can see, the desktop has all gone black and everything will go black for a second. It will then suddenly restart the whole Explorer and again, everything will just come back like it was previously. So what we're going to now do is if we actually right click on the taskbar at the bottom, as you can see, it gives us a couple more options similar to how it was in Windows 10. So if we now go to where it says properties right here, this is now a properties menu of the EP launcher or the EP patcher that we've just installed. So if we now click on where it says taskbar style, and again, you have a couple of options here. So you've got Windows 11 default, Windows 10, or you've got Windows 10 Explorer Patcher. Now, the way to look at this is the one that says Windows 10, this is for 23 H2 and previous. If you are on, run, on running 24 H2, like I am on this system, you will need to use the one that says Explorer Patcher. So if we click on where it says Explorer Patcher right here, and if we then just restart the file explorer, that will then just make your screen go black again for a second. And as you can see, our taskbar has now changed, and it's now looking exactly like it used to in Windows 10. But if we click on the start menu here, just to bring up the uh, start menu, as you can see, it's still bringing it up like Windows 11. So don't worry, there's a fix for this as well. So if we now just go back into the software again, into the properties menu, go into the start menu, and as you can see, position on screen, click on this, and you can then just change it to where it says at screen edge. If we select on that, just do a quick restart of the file explorer again. Give that a second. If we now just click on where this little start menu is down here, it might be a little bit delayed. There we go. And as you can see, it's now brought up the Windows 11 menu, but for Windows 10, so in the bottom left corner. So maybe you now don't want the Windows 11 start menu, but you want the old Windows 10 menu. So again, right in this options properties menu again, as you can see right here, it says start menu style. So if we now click on this and then click on Windows 10, and then if we then go to restart, just right here, and again, if you, there is some options in here, if you want to run through it, just feel free to run through it at your own leisure. You can customize it even more. But if we just click on the start menu again, now we just made that change. As you can see, this all now looks like Windows 10, which again, if you're coming from Windows 10 to Windows 11, and obviously you've only just sort of got used to that start menu, then obviously that's probably going to be something that you would probably prefer to use. So hopefully these little few changes have helped you move over from Windows 10 to Windows 11, or even just made your general life with Windows 11 a lot easier. Now, obviously I understand Windows 11, it is a big change. Unfortunately, it is gonna be the, the new sort of default operating system within a few months time as Windows 10 comes to end of life. So unfortunately, many users are just gonna have to deal with Windows 11. But hopefully that's helped anyway, guys. As always, thank you for watching today's video. Please smash that like button if you found this video helpful. And please also hit that subscribe button to continue supporting my channel. And also please leave your comments and feedback down in the comment section down below. You can also check me out on or by joining my Discord server, which again, the links to my Discord server is all in the description box down below, as I've literally just launched that a few days ago. And you can also check me out on all the social media handles like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And again, those will all be down in the description box down below as well. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you then. Bye for now.